another major way that students can receive feedback is what I call the review. When they have done um, at least um, half of the amount of work, we call it sometimes a midterm review, and we come together and invite a number of critics who are either people teaching at the school or often outside practitioners to come in and to um, discuss the project. Now the old time review was what we called a jury system where uh, the student presented their work to half a dozen critics and the critics then made uh, comments. But I don't consider that very educational because the student became defensive and frankly the uh, jury members became offensive in their criticism sometimes. Instead, this system um, that I do at the review is called the one-on-one, -on -one, where one faculty member uh, sits with a student for a period of 45 minutes, discuss the project, helps the student see things they hadn't seen, and then um, moves on and another faculty member comes and talks again. And during the afternoon, a student will often see three or four different faculty members and can get three or four different points of view. Because in architecture, there are no rights and wrongs. There are different uh, uh, ideas about it. And the job of the student, which I tell them, is to edit uh, and take those things from the review that are useful for their project and perhaps uh, not take everything um, that is given. So what you're about to see is a typical review of which uh, about uh, 14 outside people have been invited, practitioners, architects, engineers, and, uh, and faculty. During the afternoon, um, there will be these continuous one-on-one -on -one discussions taking place. And then finally at the end, you'll see uh, a summing up or a summary of where we are and where we're going to the next step. So this is a, uh, a midterm review. The, uh, the intention of this course <clears throat> is several, but one is making architecture for people. Does anybody have a, a Bill always has a laser pointer. Do you have one? In fact, I think you've given me about a dozen so far that I lose. So. Um, and I think it's the responsibility of architects of making places that are not only beautiful, but that, oh, ah, this is a better one. I'll, not only beautiful as these Chinese water gardens, but a place where groups can be, one person can be, a lovers can be, you can take your photographs. It is a, a place of celebration. That's our responsibility. That's our job as architects. So that's part of the course, is making places that have all these different definitions. The other part of our course is this notion of nature and architecture, which I'll talk more about. But I find here that this is all built, of course, but it doesn't matter. It's all either nature or it's all built. It's all one thing. So in fact, this notion of building and nature I have problems with. I think building and nature is the same. One's growing and it takes longer, the other one's faster. So I want to get rid of that notion. Next. Um, and it's about the place in between the sky and the water, or the sky and the land, therefore sky form and land form. That's the place where architecture takes place. Now here's some of this uh, nature or not. This is a block island, hay barrel, hay bale. I don't know if this is nature or architecture. I love it. It doesn't matter, but it's one of the two. This is Italy, where this is, of course, architecture, but the nature makes it fuzzy, which it is. So it's that combination of the two. Next. There are times when my definition of good architecture is that if the building is not there, it would be better. Well, this is Block Island, the famous lighthouse. And somehow, for me, this and this fit, as does the village. This is taken from my house of Block Island, fits with the land. That's the objective. 
if you can't make it so it fits into landscape and looks better, go home, because you don't want to muck it up, because we're mucking up the world at a great rate. Next. Here's some folks who did not muck up the world at all. In fact, produced some great things of beauty. This is in uh, Chuck, uh, Canyon de Chez, where the Native Americans built in here. Ah, there it is, and here. And the famous uh, White House, which is in here. And it's difficult to know which is built and which isn't, but it's so obvious. So this is a path in Canyon de Chez that's been worn uh, by feet. This is a, a, obviously a, a piece of granite put in the landscape on Block Island. Same thing. Next. Um, and then, of course, it's about building the ordinary and the extraordinary, which we get into more. Here's an ordinary Greek village, your common Greek village, a not so common boat, which is out of scale. But nevertheless, this is all built. You go around the corner, and you find this quite extraordinary piece of architecture, which is the same system of construction as this. Next. Now, the first problem, there's two problems here today, and there's going to be another one uh, after this. We're just getting warmed up, by the way. Uh, was building in the landscape, and these are some examples. Faye Jones of one example, Gaudi that tries to imitate. Next. Uh, the master of the horizontal, Frank Lloyd Wright, which relates to the land better than anyone I know. And a piano who relates to the sky better than anyone I know. Next, a vertical and a horizontal. The notion of transitions from the inside to the outside. We are not talking about Philip Johnson architecture where the glass bangs against the wall or the ground, but we're talking about transitions from the inside to the outside. Next. The first problem, which you will see here in some different form, um, the quarry got disassembled and has been trying to be reassembled and not quite there yet at all, but it's getting there, is a beautiful quarry in Rockport, which has been filled with water. It's probably one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture I've seen around. And I didn't know it was here for many, many years. Next. Um, this, of course, was all quarried and then abandoned, and then nature took over and eroded. And the first problem was that they had to build a place for our classroom, for me and them, somewhere on the quarry, which you will see examples of, such as this one here. Uh, and it couldn't exceed, I think, 750 square feet. Next. More pictures of this great quarry. Next, that we all thought we ought to move up to. There's some great architecture just sitting there, uh, made, but also, uh, is it nature? Is it built? I don't know. Next. Now, the second problem uh, is another quarry, which is what we're going to discuss primarily today, but both are here. Both problems are here. This is like a midterm review, but the emphasis is on the second, is that we are looking at the North End, and we're thinking of it as a quarry, just as the other quarry. In this quarry, people live, but still, it's like a quarry, the canyons, um, the cliffs. And we've taken an area that you see about, it's a little larger than that. Well, here it is on the model. This is partial. And we are building on the sides of buildings like this one, you'll find, like this one actually, on the other side. Or, uh, is that the church? Or on the rooftops, no. Here's a church. There's a site. Uh, something's wrong here, this is confusing me. But anyways, uh, it's turned around, I think. Um, we're building on the tops of buildings or on the sides of buildings or even lapping over the tops and the sides. It's a place for the studio projecting their life 10 years from now. Who they'll be, what they'll do, how many children we have. This uh, studio's got few, quite a few children. I think we could probably got a dozen. Felix has got six or seven. Where's Felix? How many are you up to? You got five at least kids in yours. And some, I think uh, Sarah gave you a couple kids also. Because <laughs> uh, Sarah ran out of room. Is that right? You. Um, but uh, last year we only had one 
we had a similar problem. We only had one kid, I think, in the whole place. They are not intending to work here except for computer because the next problem, I'll show you in a second, is going to be a community space where it will be a work center. So this is a live center on the rooftops of the quarry. Next. And so this is the kind of architecture that's already there. And of course, people are already doing this in different ways. There's somebody got more space right next to our site. Next. So what we did is that we found uh, 13 sites, 13 people in this class, and we designated areas in red. And then we had a lottery. And they got their site. I think there may have been some arguing going on or fighting of changing of sites. But everybody got a problem, so to speak, because every site had some kind of a special problem with it. Just to show you where we're going from here, starting after the vacation, is that this again is our area and when I showed you you'll see on this are all the rooftops along the way or sides of buildings and then this piece is a somewhat vacant piece of land of which we are going to build a community space for them who are living in the sky as well as the North Enders as well as for the tourists and finally bring nature back to the site to the to the city so we make a complete circle we start with the quarry, we go to the quarry that's built, and we come back to it. Next, I think there's a couple slides of that. So that's what they're going to work on uh, starting next week. Last time, I mean, I had I had the two layers of grid, yeah. uh, but then I could pretty much push the boxes out as much as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So this time I restricted myself to like five, kind of five different zones from the side. You can see like... Um, one, two. So... And I'm confused, one, one, two. Um, oh, the, 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 instead of the grid at two planes, yeah. you've got things all over at five different points, yeah. five different distances yeah. from the face. Right. Um, yeah. It's basically like having five sets of sta uh, uh, stairs coming out. They're, they're at like three feet intervals, so one set okay. of stairs would be at zone one and zone two. Just a regular thing. Is the stairs, are the stairs a large part of what? What's going on? Yeah. that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, well, and most importantly, you put in the stairs. Pardon? You put in the stairs. Yes, I put in the stairs. Yeah. That looks like a neat compromise. What did, what, what did we talk about last time? They said they could be in little glass tubes. Oh, they glass could be tubes. in glass boxes yeah. of their own. We could yeah. put the whole thing in a glass box. Right, right. Those are some of the things we threw out there. I mean, with having stairs outside, I mean, I was afraid of the diagonal like taking over the whole thing. So yeah. that's why I use glass. Plus, I put these square rectangular things in between them just to break it down and add more layering I guess. Well, Plus between when you go I'm sorry, between here? Between Got it. or here. Yeah, so so the the walls aren't limited to the space needed by the stairs. They continue right. so that they fall within a rectilinear box. Right. And the language of the boxes themselves has changed a lot. Yes. Um, the basically the window the window arrangement um, the slit just didn't give enough light, and the way that I had the boxes here um, just made this make more sense because I was cutting things down and then yeah. like making them more. This seems like a compromise between what you had and what Jan suggested. Mm -hmm. It seems like he was pushing for multiple finishes and materials on each box. We can talk about a million things. One of them is structure, and yeah, frankly, you sort of shot yourself in the foot, or 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 stole a lot of the strength that you had in the changes you made to the, to the, to the grid. Did you do it because you thought you needed to structurally for the stairs? Or did the stairs sort of drive the different bars more, more conceptually? Sorry, you mean did I place the columns and the beams as a result of where I wanted to come? Yeah. No. There, there was. It was more of uh, supporting the boxes than the stairs because I thought that the stairs. Not. We used to do it. Oh, better. really? Well, maybe you are. A little bit. You started by saying you're structurally you're in trouble. Now you're, you're changing your tune. Um, well, I'm saying it was support a little, but definitely not enough. The, I guess the one who worries me the most is the high brown one. Mm -hmm. That one uh, just sticks And if there. you just dropped in a vertical uh -huh. or two, 
I feel a lot better. At the corners, farthest from the wall. We're close farthest to it. Farthest It doesn't have to be right on the corner, but close enough. Right now you've got... Yeah, in elevation, you're, you're asking a lot. You've got the wall, you've got the box, and basically they're held up like that. Mm -hmm. If you could give me, I'm not, that'd be one thing if you gave me a column there, but mm -hmm. it could be there, it could be here, mm -hmm. somewhere more than halfway out, so mm -hmm. it's a decent mm -hmm. candle. Mm -hmm. And if you gave me a plan, if they were, I'd love to have two. They don't have to line up with each other. One could be further back than the other. Mm -hmm. There's a column, column. Mm -hmm. We'd be in better shape. Oh, there are a lot of wall-based things that here that don't touch the ground. Mm -hmm. Hers doesn't touch the ground at all, right. and I think that's correct. Yours has always sort of grown out of the ground. I mean, I don't mind the fact that yours is on, on stilts touching the ground. And I wouldn't design around to get rid of it. I will say this, though. They, um, you, some kind of, of lateral stiffening or, or, or diagonal bracing or something to hold you rigid is going to be necessary. You can imagine a field of just perfectly rectilinear members and joints, be they vertical or horizontal or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. If there's nobody in there to brace you, mm -hmm. and those are all hinge connections, it'll all flop over. Mm -hmm. There's another way to think about it. Have you had any structures courses yet? Yeah. Um, if you took like a, a soccer goal with hinge connections all the way around, mm -hmm. that's not stable and it can flop right over. Three ways to fix it are, number one, moment connections. Where you go in and change the way the thing is detailed and make each of those connections able to withstand that lateral twist. Mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Step two is a shear wall, where you go in and fill it with cinder blocks. Okay. And now it's not gonna fall over. It's less effective as a soccer goal. Um, the third would be to brace it to put in cables on right. that. And that's where he's headed. I think it'd be a shame because it's such a poem right now. You know, of, 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 a, of, a, of a clear, limited, beautiful set of elements. And I think introducing that, A, would clutter it you know, and detract from its, its beauty. And B, it would really change it in a way that doesn't have to happen. Um, we could get away without it. How could we do it? Number one, we could add some of those guys, oh. um, <clears throat> some bracing. Okay. Instead of putting it in the framework and hanging these boxes from it, you could put it in the boxes. Okay, like in the walls? Yeah. Let's say that we've got column, column, beam coming out, beam coming out, beam. Imagine conceptually that the, the frames are there first. We come in and we build a box on it, on that frame. And there's a box. And within that wall, around the windows, it can easily be done around the windows, um, we put in members in that skin. And then we cover it up. And there are the windows and the finish has whatever we want on it. Instead of, instead of the boxes purely being cargo, mm -hmm. instead of saying, you know, grid is structure, boxes are cargo, we can make the boxes work for us structurally and they can lend rigidity to the whole thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, you could also do it just by, by the way the joints are put together and things like that. You don't, uh, and here's option number So option one is, is, is do it with the boxes. Option two is do it with the joints. And what that just means is instead of, imagine these are, are tubular steel mm -hmm. forms. Maybe that's what you want, maybe it's not. But uh, and we've got sort of two boxes coming together made of steel. Mm -hmm. Conceptually, the hinge connection may just be welded around the outside. To make it a moment connection, it may just mean that there's an angle on it there. And the same thing on the bottom. And the weld is different or longer. Um, 
it seems like a simple change. Conceptually, in the way it works, it's a very different change. We can do it without adding all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And by having those, sorry, by having those structures in there, you don't have to worry about where you place your windows because... It's not that you don't have to worry about where you place your windows, but with maybe an exception or two, you could always find a way to make it work without screwing up the windows that you want to put in. Okay. For example, it did a big building where we had to put in some of these brace frames, is typically what you call them. And you got a whole building like that, your structural engineer said, I'm, it's all going to fall over unless I have a brace frame somewhere. So let me do that, and let me do that, and let me do that. That's what they'll tell you. We had a building where he wear that's exactly what he told me. I said, well, geez, that's the stairway, and I need to put the door there. Mm. He said, okay, I'll do that instead. And, fine. and you can do the same thing to work around your window. Okay. Um, option number three is do it with the stairs. In general, bracing is all about putting in diagonals. Because the square... The, the square ain't stable, but triangles are. You had to bite your tongue and put in these diagonals anyway to, to do this to in the form of the stairs. In my mind, that's what you wanted to do. That's what your dream project. You say, well, crap, i got to put in these stairs. Yeah. Well, if you also got to put in something diagonal somewhere, uh -huh. you already did. So you're saying the stairs can be structural? Sure. Yeah. If, and I'm going to draw a simple diagram instead, but you've built, you built this rectilinear Farnsworth house steel box. And the engineer says it's going to fall down unless you put it in diagonal. So, okay, well, I'll do that. I don't want to. It was all about horizontals and verticals, but if I got to do that, I got it. Mm -hmm. Well, if Jan then comes along and says you got to put in stairs too, well, why the hell not put them in right because right now the stairs themselves, I mean, not only are they not helping structurally, they're not supported by anything at all. They don't need to be supported by much. Really? Yeah. Here's, here's, a, here's a cool example. I'm, and, and now we're moving from stairs as structural, as givers of structural rigidity to just what can I do structurally mm -hmm. with stairs. Let's say you've got box here. And box here. Um, you can have, well, actually, let me simplify it more. Say floor of building, floor of building. You can have stairs attached here and attached there. Have, let's add a third dimension. Uh, stairs that attach here and attach there. The stringers come down and support the platform. And it's, it's supported by the stringers there, and that's it. And there ain't nothing in section. All you get is this is stairs, stairs, boom. And there are no columns, and there are no hangers, and there's nothing like you've got, like those like guys. No, I was thinking low, one one tier down. No, nope, in between, to the left. Maybe those guys. How are they different from that one? Um, they're not. Those come down and, and you can support those on the white box. Those guys don't come down and sit on the yellow box. They're just supported by, the, by where they come from and where they go to. They can be that minimal if you want them to, structurally speaking. Now, if they're doing that, then they're not doing much of what we talked about on the last page. But it's not all that difficult. I like the idea of the rectilinear planes beside the stairs. Oh, you like them? Yeah. You know, mm, 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 mm. you want to catch those? Right now, they're they're not open and they're not closed. Yeah. What if you did this? What if you imagined them as as another box? That's another kind of box. Ah. You got two kinds of boxes here. You got uh -huh. you got solid ones. You got opaque ones. You got transparent ones. That's a good idea. Yeah. And the opaque ones come in three colors, yeah. and, and you do stuff in there. And the yeah. transparent ones are stairs, and the transparent ones maybe overlap the other ones. You know, as they have to. Sometimes they die into the opaque ones. Sometimes they stand in front of them. So you got box. You know, there's a room, and here's a room. 
Um, and there's a box that overlaps that guy a little bit. And then comes down, you know, and, and dies into that one. How am I doing? I'm, I'm yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, so he's opaque, uh -huh. and he's opaque, mm -hmm. and, and the stairs are in these glass boxes in between. And they're all as light as can possibly be. The only thing, I, I love this, the program, the idea of looking at the north end as the gorge, you know, as the valley, mm -hmm. where you come in and, and, and glom onto the sides of buildings or hang off the top and treat them just like the landscape. Mm -hmm. The catch is that we set ourselves up as completely different than all the other buildings there. You know, we're not treating them like colleagues that we have to get along with or have any kind of conversation with. We're just treating them like background. Mm -hmm. Whether you do that or whether you are more contextual or, you know, how you treat them is likely to be different or is worth considering as you move on to the next program. You know, and to this... You mean to the community center? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. In the community center, if it's really... It, well, I'm, I can't... It's hard to say this without loading it with my own preference. But are you going to treat the north end like a quarry, like a background, you know, like this perch for you to come in and, and camp on? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to go in there as a citizen and treat the other, the other, you know, the rest of the North End like citizens. Right. And say, I'm of you guys, I'm like you guys, I'm with you guys. I'm going to put a building amongst your buildings mm -hmm. and then relate to it in all the ways I have to or ought to or want. What I see myself in 10 years, I've always had pets and I really, really enjoy having pets. Mm -hmm. And I've grown up with birds and dogs. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be living in the city, I probably don't want to have a dog. Mm -hmm. Just my personal preference. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that I would have birds when I, you know, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the site that I was assigned is hanging over the building. Mm -hmm. So it lends itself to a really vertical language. And so what I was thinking was that I could have this whole column devoted to the birds mm -hmm. so that they'd be free to fly around in there, mm -hmm. just the whole thing. And I mean, it's really tall and narrow, but it doesn't matter to them because they can, you know, travel. They don't need a horizontal space. Mm -hmm. And then um, my next thing was that I put the staircase right next to the column of birds mm -hmm. so that I could put these little perches for myself to go into the room so that I could sort of be in the room at all these different places. And some of them would occur at the landings and be like a continuous space and some of them would just be right off of the stairs mm -hmm. so that, you know, when you're looking at the building, it's just this really vertical thing with just a few perches in it mm -hmm. and uh, the stairs continue down the whole way. So that was the start, and then uh, I tried to sort of echo this language in the rest of the building, and just to walk you through, this space down here is the living room, mm -hmm. and then the kitchen's on top, and then lofted above the kitchen is a, a dining area with like a little deck on the outside. And then this is the bathroom and bedroom, and then you'd open up to a, a roof area. Mm -hmm. So this is a south-facing wall. So uh, most of the light's coming in from this way, like sort of through the, the bird and the stairs. So this is south? Yeah. Well, north is this way. This is south facing. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted the stairs to be ooh, it's coming apart. something clear so that when you look through, you, you still pretty much have the same elevation that you have here. Because I really like the way it works. Mm -hmm. um, and so most of my windows on this thing are really vertical windows sort of going with that vertical theme. And then uh, what I started to do was sort of have these little spaces popping out of the rooms here and down there, you know, just going along with this sort of geometric orthogonal. I mean, that was my really original sketch. I wanted to sort of play with this idea of... The one all the way to the left? Yeah. Uh -huh. This idea of sort of having these pretty simple forms interacting with one another to have a pretty interesting side. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's where I am right now. This was the sketch model. And uh, the progression was that I, I was pretty happy with this, but I really didn't like the top. And so uh, I switched the roof plane so that they matched. And then I added this little guy. And then when I had this top on top of that, they seemed a little bit ajar that this was, you know, so regular. And so then I started taking out little pieces here and little pieces here, and then adding like other little vertical numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's where I am right now. What do you see as the materials? Um, the structure would be a light steel, so that it could be like about a six inch square member. I talked to Dave about it and he said that because it's hanging, it could be a really, really that structure, and so that proportion of these are actually pretty accurate. Um, and then the actual materials of the sidings, I'm not 100% sure. It would uh, it would be some other light material, sort of non-traditional, maybe um, like sheet metal or sort of plexiglass. Probably a combination of things, not just one set. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Something really light. And then I definitely want to have some opaque pieces, you know, so that it breaks up the thing a little bit. Mm -hmm. you're, you're developing um, a sort of a series of little perches mm -hmm. and of these guys that are opaque. And I almost want to, see, and 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 the translucence of this whole stairwell almost separates these perches from the house. Uh -huh. In a way, the different floors of the house, the way that, that you've done them from the outside, almost look like perches themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be really neat to um, sort of see that relationship between the human perches and the bird perches, uh -huh. and the stairs are a very interesting way to to sort of literally so would you think about those. maybe so I think it might be interesting to to think about the structure of this and of this in terms of any horizontal elements that need to be there uh -huh. and make those horizontal elements work with the use of the stairwell access to these and access to these which you need you need access to all of those things and in that way intermix some um, some readable structure that connects all the way through within this framework. Yeah. Um, As I mean, some of them would go through, like this one. This is straight through into the kitchen level. Mm -hmm. So maybe make that the, the material. The, you know, the, the material. Maybe read. Maybe maybe read that and, and read yeah. the read the uses and the relationships a little bit more from the outside. And the fact that this is already so translucent, I think, will allow us to see that relationship from the outside that much that much better. Um, if everything is translucent, then the translucentness might in some ways lose its, yeah. its specialty. Yeah. Um, but if you choose where it's translucent and you choose where it's not, uh -huh. then they they can both um, they can both sort of emphasize each other and accentuate each other. And I do think I, I do think that I don't know. In my mind, I sort of see this this network of, of almost branches or columns coming up, and then these little tree houses and bird houses perched down along the building, which I think is really yeah. interesting. Yeah. So do you see the steel being? Well, I imagine you do. And so you you see this as as the structural steel being exposed. Yeah. Um, visually, mm -hmm. and then having. But it, it would be really really light. I think the dimension somewhere five or six inches square mm -hmm. is how thick it would have to be. So yeah, the, the structure would be exposed, but you know, I think that almost not there. I think that, that it's very nice to sort of see yeah. see that grid. I mean, don't... But the I, point I give you in the dimensions is it would be a lot different if you had to have these like thick columns exposed, you know, but it... Well, but it, in, in a way, to how it would be in real life. In a way, I mean, it it's also wouldn't have to be bad to have sort of see a few really heavy, strong mm -hmm. columns, and then this light system yeah. building off of it. Sort of like when you, um, oh, I mean, when you're in a forest, you see you see these a bunch of tree trunks, mm -hmm. and then there are these small limbs sort of everywhere, and that's what and this is what this is sort of starting to remind me of a little bit.
So I would think, I mean, if you if you imagine what that system once you once you connect to the stairwell, because I think that's a very important point, is to connect this to everything, and then see what that gives you in terms of the horizontal and the vertical uh, points of reference. Think about whether you know. I wouldn't try to feel like you have to hide the structure or feel like, you know, oh, it's got to stay really yeah. small and slender. I don't want people to see it too much. Well, it's not that it's I don't want to see it. I just think that it. the language of it mm -hmm. works a lot better light rather than mm -hmm. having, at least vertically. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you vertically. Yeah, I think this is such an energizer for the house that I, I mean, my my biggest impression is that I really want to be more a part of it when I'm over here. I don't want to feel like I'm separated from it. And, I, and mm -hmm. you've got such an opportunity with a relatively big, I mean, as far as for a residential stairwell, yeah. such a huge opportunity here that I would really, really explore the, the connections there. And I think, and I, I, I think it'll energize the project that much more from the street level too, because to see that this is like a continuous atrium of you know birds and light and stairs that's constantly enlivening the space and that this space accesses it is great. You know, I mean, imagine being in the kitchen and fixing something and then not having to feel like I'm sort of crawling over something, but just pass on over into the bird atrium. It's, uh, it's very nice. And right now I feel like I would have to, but it, it, I mean, it might just be the fact that you don't have this in here. But Yeah, I would, well, I told you, know, you it's a kitchen think, and this is a continuous. Yeah, but um, material-wise and maybe design-wise, I'd yeah. push that maybe one more level because there's, you know, there's a good bit of space there to do things with. Maybe even be able to let the birds fly around there. So I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's good where you have it. What about roofs here? Um, I like them that are open. What Chris had said was that structurally it might be problematic to have these sort of open things, but that maybe even put a a roof facade lower down and then still have these pieces up here. I, I mean, as image right now, it would just be glass. Mm -hmm. But uh, it might need something a little bit more structural. Uh, right now, you, you, you imagine it just being glass? Yeah. Like flat up at the top? Yeah, I mean, I think I think where I would definitely agree is that the that the roofs here have a chance to do something other than what the roofs here do. It can be different and sort of more flighty or great. Yeah. Um, whether it has to be glass at the top or not, yeah, like, you know, maybe not. Maybe you just have some sort of different, really flying off form. But I think it's great. And I want to thank the students for um, the effort over the last couple of days. And Jen and I were conferring that it was really, um, I think it's a step forward because we didn't see any surprises this morning, which means that you've been working for the last two or three days on this and it didn't happen overnight, which is what happens usually. Because the next project, you can't do overnight. Um, I also just want to say that um, I think everybody came a long ways in a short time on this project and uh, I'm very pleased with what we got.